to Earth and Find Shine. My name is Huda London. This is for entertainment purpose only. This is the case of the Idol quadruple murders. May the four victims rest in peace, condolence to their families, and may the correct justice be served. Please like, share, and subscribe. Joe Vito was the man in the grub truck. I personally believe Joe Vito is an important part of what, that, what happened that night, especially at the grub truck. There were a lot of there were a lot of weird things happening. It seemed like everyone, well, let me correct myself, most of the people there between 3.40 to maybe 2.30 had a lot to do with the quadruple murders. I don't mean that they did the quadruples but they know what was up because they were clearly yelling Zana's name they were watching something on the phone devices they were gathered in a crowd not even in groups it was like 10 15 people gathered around yelling Zana's name and even his name This was after the girls left. Another thing that I have an issue with is Jovito has been very untruthful with most of the things he said. He said that he did not know John Jack Showalter, aka Hoodie Guy, allegedly. Seems like he knows it. They were having lengthy conversation, having laughs together. He even informed him when the girls were about to leave. So that just can't be coincidence. Joe here, I just wanted to jump on this and make a video real quick. Let me kind of just squash some stuff that I've been seeing. So um, first and foremost, I feel super awkward that I even have to make this video, but I've been like not really keeping track of all of the stuff that's going on with this investigation for those girls that were, that were killed and um, to start off um, like the very next day when they had announced the murders and um, and when they had shown the photos, as soon as I saw the photos, I messaged the two people that were in that video that I was talking to, um, my neighbor and then another guy that we had met earlier that night who I thought was really cool. Um, and we invited him to come on the grab bus. Um, I was like, hey, weren't two of these girls at the grab bus with us last night? And they couldn't remember, but um, they were also very drunk. And I was not. So um, I did have, there's a drink called a Larry Craig. That's like a really popular drink over here. I did have one of those at um, Corner Club. But I mean, other than that, I was, I was totally sober. When they confirmed that those were the girls, um, the only reason I knew that it was those girls was because I saw the video that said, oh, they were seen at this thing. Because I actually called the police right away and was like, hey, I just have why is Jovito so busy talking about what drinks the girls had, how intoxicated they were, how much they had to drink? And it's interesting enough that he mentions the girls' drinking patterns from the corner club. Pay attention to that. So we have somebody here who's a witness of possibly what happened in the corner club. What did he see in the corner club? Was he stalking them? Because 
He was paying attention to how much Maggie and Katie had to drink, who was more intoxicated. They were sitting at this thing, because I actually called the police right away and was like, hey, I just have, I think I might have information. Um, I just need to know, like, what was one of the girls wearing, because I remember one of them had, like, pink, because the one that bumped up, bumped into me at Corner Club was wearing pink. But nobody called me back from the police, and I was like, okay, they're probably just swapped with information, probably whatever. But then when the video came out, and people were like, no, those were the girls. And those two people were like, dude, those were the girls. I wonder if Jack Showalter, hoodie guy, and Jovito are giving each other signals or texting each other. Because they've been facing each other for a while. And just look at each other. And as soon as the girls entered, Jovito spoke on his wristwatch, his Apple Watch, I guess. He clearly spoke on it, and that is exactly when they came in, then they walked in. Jovito was at the corner club, we have to keep that in mind. So he's an important witness. He should have been an important witness, and I can't... I can't... understand how come Moscow police did not contact Mr. Vito. Mr. Vito said clearly that he was the one contacting them. And when he went there, they said, we already know who you were. Pay attention to even Eric, the driver who drove, drove Kaylee and Maddie home, said that he contacted the police. And the police told him already that they knew he that he drove them home. It seems like all these people who saw the girls last were the ones contacting the police, not the other way around. And the police seemed to give them the same answers that they already know who they are and where they were that night. said clearly that he was the one contacting them. And when he went there, they said, we already know who you were. So it's like they did their own homework from the cameras. They decided already who was going down for this crime, allegedly, or who did this crime. But let's not forget the first 40 days, 47 days, they did not know who did this crime. So aren't they supposed to be treating everyone as a person of interest? And asking them questions. Just watching the grub truck, you can see that so much is happening there. How could they miss it? Moscow police did not even have the grub truck footage. It was Alivira, Kaylee's sister, who contacted them, telling them that Maddie and Kaylee were at the grub truck the last time. So what work was Moscow police actually doing is my question. Many of the interviews of people who saw the girls last, like Jack Showalter, a.k.a. Hoodie Guy, were done over the phone. And that is not a pr proper police integration. You're supposed to meet the person face to face to see if they have any cuts on their hands, if they have any injuries. Looking at Maddie and laughing, I think it was because Maddie was intoxicated. May, she, may God rest her soul. May she rest in peace. Just look at this nonsense. If you're not telling me these people came innocently to grab a bite, then I guess we all see things differently. They knew what, these people knew what they were up to. They knew what the game was about. The job they were sent was for. 
you have David Lotch and his two friends on the left hand near the window. Just see what's going on here. This is when Mandy tells them, you Mr. F you. Something was going on that night. Were these people trying to upset Mandy? Did she notice something, but maybe she was so intoxicated that she didn't realize that actually something more sinister was happening around them? Could be possible. But Mandy wasn't being friendly to them at all. And she recipes. Mandy looks like she's facey in a positive way. Kaylee was too busy texting. It looks like she was scrolling through something and I wonder if that could be a LinkedIn account possibly. Was this about payments? Maybe? Could this have been about money? video came out and people were like no those were the girls and most of the people were like dude those were the girls i was like okay i'm gonna physically go to the police station and talk to the police i told the police everything i saw um which is different than what i think is going out there right now and i'm yeah i was just waiting for food i'm just like everybody else in town that waits for food at the grab bus it does take a while um everybody goes there and so that was kind of the thing. It was like, no, we got to, if you're ending the night, you end it at Grub Bus. But other than that, I don't really have any, like, crazy information. I don't know why everybody's reaching out to me. I don't know why so many people are trying to spin things around. And so what I've decided to do is that I'm only commenting on things that are, like, ridiculous. So trying to give clarity. But, man, people are really turning this into something it's not. Um, sorry, I just had to do this in two parts because there's a lot. Um, yeah, I'm also shivering. It's cold. I'm in my truck. Um, yeah. So I want to address a few things specifically. One being the news article that came out was the first person that I actually like talked to with the news media. A lot of a lot of media outlets have reached out um, to me, and I've just ignored them because I just was like, man, I'm like, I just was waiting for food. Like, I have nothing to add. I've given all the helpful information I can to the police and it would make zero sense for me to give any more information to random people. Um, but these rumors that are going around were just like crazy. And I, and I didn't have a bad vibe from the guy that people were dragging through the mud. I don't know if he did it or not. I don't know. I'm just saying like, I could speak to the vibe I got from him, which was all people really wanted to know at first anyways. And I thought he was fine. Now, the, now the, the news outlet that I talked to, I mean, he really embellished some stuff I said and added his own words to things and kind of changed the verbiage. I wasn't defending anybody. That's one thing he said. Um, I wasn't defending him. I was just saying people need to stop spreading rumors because that could ruin his life. What if he's innocent? It would ruin his life. The other thing he said is that I noticed him come in with the girls. I didn't notice him come in with the girls. I didn't notice him till I started, till I cracked the joke to the frat guys because I thought it was ridiculous that it was like freezing outside and that guy was in a tree top. So that's made a joke because then. Jovito, you need to come up with the facts and the truth. I watched the grub truck video over millions of times. You saw the girls coming in with Hoodie Guy. And then you spoke on your wrist. I don't know if you have an Apple Watch on your wrist or if you're rubbing your nose, but you look towards the direction and then you spoke on your wrist. So you did actually see Maddie, Kaylee, and Jack John Showalter entering. You saw them. When Maddie went to the other side, you followed it. You went to the other side too. You're busy pointing out fingers to number nine in different directions, number eight, this whole group. 
It seems like you knew the fraternity boys more than you're saying. So what was going on that night? You could be one of the closest in getting the answers. You are watching some pictures that were really dirty, that were really fishy. And you are adult, you're much older than the people in the grub truck. You've seen more, maybe you just don't want to be involved, or maybe you are involved, allegedly, it's one of the two. I hear you allegedly a career advisor in the economics department for the students in the University of I don't know, Moscow, I don't know if that's true. If that is true, they need to check a bit into your ethics. Ethics and your morals and principles are really rubbish. These were two young girls. Like you said, you have a daughter yourself. Go to the frat guys because I thought it was ridiculous that it was like freezing outside and that guy was in a tank top. So Giovito clearly admits that he was cracking jokes with the frat boys. But yet again, he doesn't know who the guy. Pay attention to that. Giovito clearly admits that he was cracking jokes with the frat boys, with the fraternity boys. He knows that. But yet again, he doesn't know who the guy. Pay attention to that. He's trying to distance himself from John Jack Schwalter. I did and I noticed him. I, I didn't notice him until that moment. Um, when I was at Corner Club, when I said, ew, some people were like, what? That's such a weird thing to say. Why would I? That's what you say when you're standing talking to friends and somebody really drunk, like they smell drunk, they're like bouncing around, and they bump into you and like rub up against you. Like that's what you, it's gross. I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but she was really, I mean, if you've even seen the Girl Buzz video, she couldn't even, she walked between us several times and just couldn't even stop box straight. That girl was very drunk. She's actually the only one that I thought was really drunk. This is the part that really upsets me. It really burns. And boils my blood. Why would you disrespect and talk so badly about a young girl, young woman who is deceased in the most horrific manner? Where is your bloody ethical morals? Sorry guys for so swearing. You know me, I don't cuss. I really apologize for that. But where is this man's morals for him to be talking about the next man's daughter in such a hor horrible manner? Jovito is busy saying yik, ouch, oof, ash, like children because somebody was smelling drunk, because they looked drunk or because they were drunk or intoxicated. Since you're a career advisor, why didn't you advise the people working in the corner club to stop serving a young girl who's had enough? What was really happening there, Joe? Aren't you adult? What happened to teamwork, community work, staff, even if you're staff in a university? What happened to all that? Why didn't you check on the girls? Why didn't you tell them to stop serving them, that the girls have had enough? Or was that maybe not part of your plan? Was the plan to go all the way in? to get them as drunk as they possible. You said you have a daughter. Maddie somebody's daughter, Kaylee somebody's daughter. That's unacceptable. That's a shame in fact. You're a grown man. You could have straightened everything that was going on there. You could have put the girls on a cab safely from the corner club and sent them home. They could have ordered DoorDash or whatever. What's it called? What was it called? Takeaway or whatever. 
Uber Eats or whatever they could have ordered. You could have made sure they didn't even go to the grub truck. And it's not only you, Joe Vito. The same goes for Jack T. The same goes for Adam. Especially the bartender. If I was the authority, I would have given him a penalty at least of 20k. Supposed to be serving young adults or anyone for that matter, getting them so intoxicated. That's dangerous. You could see when the girls were walking from the corner club down to the grab truck with Hoodie Guy, when they're talking about Adam, you could see how they, uh, Kaylee's legs are crossing. You could see how intoxicated Maddie was. I'm not saying that in a disrespectful way. I'm trying to point out that there are some people in life that try to take advantage and make fun of somebody at the most vulnerable time. That's wrong. Between us, several times, and just couldn't even stop box straight. That girl was very drunk. She's actually the only one that I thought was really drunk. And she was the only one I noticed at Quarter Club because she had bumped into me. Um, another thing that was weird is that the guy who was interviewing me from the Daily Mail or whatever it was, um, he said glass eye, and I was like, sure, yeah, like that. I didn't actually even use that word. That was his word. And then, as far as the car goes, yeah, there's a car that pulled up. I, I couldn't remember what it was. I couldn't remember if it was black, blue, gray. I couldn't remember. I just remember that a car pulled up. Ooh, it was so cold. Um, so, yeah, so I didn't know what color the car was. It was dark. And I just felt like when I told the guy, I said it was a dark car, I couldn't remember what color it was. And I think when I was at the police station, I couldn't remember what color it was. They asked me to. And, um, yeah, so, but the Daily Mail guy was like, no, you need to, like, was it blue? Was it black? I was like, I, I can't remember if it was blue or black. I can't remember. He's like, well, we'll just say dark color car. And I was like, okay. I was like, I think it was a four-door sedan. But this guy got out and was like, hey, let's go. Let's, what's going on? Because the girls were making videos and laughing and they were trying to grab all the food. Every time food was coming out from the grub bus, they were just trying to grab it. <laughs> and um, they thought it was funny. And I mean, it was, I mean, it was a little funny, but they were, they were trying to grab all the food that was coming out. And um, when I went up and I talked to the guy at the grub bus, I said, did you just give them food? Because he just said, here you go, like that and gave them food. And then they ran off. I thought, I actually told the grub bus, I was like, that was really nice of you. He's like, yeah, they just need to, you know, they need to get home. And I was like, yeah, they're, yeah. They were trying to climb into the grub bus. So, I mean. Let's start with the, uh, Jovito. Let's not forget, Kaylee paid for the food. We saw that clearly she paid with a visa card, with a contactless card. I observed that from the first day I saw this, the first day it came out. So please do not disrespect deceased people who are not here to answer for themselves. Thank God we got to see that. Second thing, stop lying about Maddie and Kaylee, especially Maddie. She didn't try to jump into the grub truck. How would they even climb? The counter is much higher. It's quite high up there for them to climb. Could it be possibly that you got Maddie so intoxicated in the corner club that she couldn't stand on her feet? Allegedly. They weren't trying to jump into the car, inside the, uh, inside the grub truck. Absolutely not. And Kaylee paid for her food. So you and the grub truck manager are both lying. Pay attention to how many times Jovito says they were drunk. They were intoxicated. Uh, they were all over the place. He continues saying they were drunk again. Pay attention to this whole interview. Count how many times he says anything to do with drunk, intoxicated, alcohol, anything with that. He was trying to give us this image immediately that he's a sober man and he witnessed two young girls who were drunk, who were wasted, who 
who are intoxicated, who are bouncing all over the place, kind of trying to say that that was what the night was looking like, so he's not surprised of what happened. That's how I see it. Maybe it doesn't mean that way, that he should have prepared himself better for interview. Unless he's an antisocial personality disorder person, unless he's a psychopath who can't control his emotions, like he can't show empathy, he can't show, he doesn't seem to show any empathy. All he keeps on talking about is how intoxicated the girls were. Maybe his plan is to make it come across that way that these girls were drunk and wasted and they did not know what they were doing or they did not know where they were going so that we wouldn't dig deeper into the drug truck. Did I say drug truck? Sorry, grub truck. I really mean it. But I look at it as a grub truck. Grub drug truck, sorry. Because with all the nonsense going on there, you can see it's more than a grub truck. I'm really so upset that these two young women were not looked after. They could have been alive as we speak. What was happening in the corner club was not right. Jovita was watching pictures that looked like they were bodies on the floor. I'm being honest. Go back to the grub truck. Watch every action of Jovita. How about that? Every time you watch a grub truck, focus on someone. That's what I do. And then in your mind, you can see with your eyes if they're up to something or not. There's so many people that in the grub truck that honestly I thought were up to no good, but the closer I paid attention and after watching it several times, many times, plenty of times, I've noticed they weren't in it. But there were many people that I expected were just innocent bystanders, but were actually deep into whatever madness was going on, whatever whatever was going on. Maybe they were just making fun of the girls, like he said that they call them zombies. But I don't believe that. I don't believe that because the pictures he was watching, Jovita was watching, tells everything. If I was the FBI in this particular case, I would have seized, I would have got a warrant for Jovito's phone, for the crowd who were calling out Zana's name after 2 a.m. I would have got a warrant for everyone in the corner club, the songs at a certain time, certain period of time when Kaylee and Maddie were around. I know that's a difficult one for, for the FBI, it's not difficult at all. They just get out warrants, they need to check whose phones were all pinging in the corner club, check the bank statements of all the people who've paid, transactions made, tra transactions bought even one drink that night or bought nothing. They need to look into all the people. BK, example, if BK did this crime, could have gone to the corner club, disguised himself with a hoodie and with a beamy cap. He wouldn't even notice his BK. He could have sat, had a couple of drinks at the corner in the dark and just watched the girls. Or he could have been on the what's it called, Grub Truck live stream Twitch. Did y'all know that I heard, and I'm not sure, this is for entertainment purpose, I heard that the Grub Truck Twitch has over 20 or 30K followers. Imagine that. So imagine 20K or 30K 
who could have been on that night watching Katie and Maddie and the rest of the girls. Guys, this could have been anyone. I know BK's knife sheet was found in the place and I never rule out BK. Let me make that clear. I never say that BK is innocent. I just want to know what is his involvement in it. He could be innocent, but the more I dig in deeper into this case, BK has some knowing it in it. I'm starting to wonder, was he a hitman? Allegedly, was he hired? I just don't believe this was a obsession story that he was a peeping Tom standing outside the window watching the girls, lost the plot, went amok and then did the quadruple murders. Absolutely not. I believe for such a horrific quadruple brutal murders to have happened, either to be about money, love, that's crime of passion, revenge. And I can see that all three of the things I said, love, revenge, jealousy, money, all of them I can see in certain people. I'm not passing ac accusations. I'm not accusing anyone of doing these crimes, but there are three unidentified male DNAs that are allegedly lost in the system according to Will Thompson, William Thompson, prosecutor, the prosecutor in this case. Who were the three un unidentified male DNAs? They could be anyone. One of the Jacks, both of the Jacks allegedly, both of the Davids, one of the Davids, DM, BF, name it. Because these people took eight hours to call the police. So I'm not going to feel guilty. Because my loyalty lies to the four victims and nobody else. Those names have been always around from day one. So these are not new names I'm throwing around. Jack D. John Jack. Shawalter Jr. Dylan Mortison. Bethany Funk. Certain people whose names have always been up in this mix. Hunter Johnson. In fact, I think he's important. He's the first one to appear there. Why did these girls, the surviving roommates, call Hunter Johnson first? He practically lived in that house. So he would know everything that happened, allegedly. Well, let's get back to, let me not get carried away, sorry. Let's get back to this man here. This man talking about intoxication, zombies, drunk. They were drinking, they were drunk all night. That's all he said. And he's an important character, he's an important witness. He was at the corner club, he was at the club shop. That means he spent half of his nights with Katie and Mary. Imagine that. He spent plenty of hours with them. Was he sent to pay attention? Was he working for someone? Allegedly? Just a question. I'm not talking only about Joe Vito, I'm talking about most of the people at the grub truck who started coming there 15 minutes, 20 minutes before the girls came. I believe this was all pre-planned. And I believe there are many people who were involved in this crime. That's why DM said she heard rummaging upstairs. She thought it was a party. Trying to climb into the grub bus. So, Stop I mean, very drunk. Stop lying. And then, honestly, as soon as they called my number, that's, I mean, I told the guys, they're leaving, bro. And they called my number. I, all I could think about was pasta. I didn't think about anything else other than just eating macaroni and cheese. And, and that's, and, and that was it. I didn't give any other thoughts. I didn't think anything else about it. Um, yeah. Some people have said that, like, 
I've seen some people say like, oh, that thing is suspicious how much Joe remembers. I, I'm not an adult. Like, as soon as I realized that those were the girls that we saw there, I tried my best to remember everything and recount it from that night because I knew that it would help in the investigation. So, Thank you for that, Joe. Hopefully it will have helped if you explain to the police what was happening the, from the corner club. I just hope you didn't tell the police about the grub truck. Did they ask you about the corner club? And he said you have to remember about that night. It was the next day you spoke to the police. How much did you have to sit and remember? Kind of strange. You're still a young man. Your brain, sh your brain should be fresh. And like you said, you weren't drinking that night. You said you had only one drink. Allegedly, many people are saying that, Joe, that the Coca-Cola can you had, had a camera inside. Would you be able to rewind that to the police, just in case it's a camera? It would have been helpful. The girls were still alive at that point. And I have the can of soda that I had in my video. I have it in my hands walking. Pay attention to this part. It's really interesting. Jovita says that people thought, people, some people said Joe could have done it. And I said that I have cameras in my house. The cameras would see me when I was walking in. And then he says, when I entered my house, the, the unlivings didn't even happen then. Now pay attention to one thing. When Jovita did this interview was one, two days after the quadruples. That was on the 14th, 15th of November, even later 16th of November. So how would he know that the unlivings did not happen before he reached home. How would he know that unless he's, he knows of the people who know about the unliving situation? Does that make sense? Pay attention to this part. In the investigation. Some people said, oh, John might have been a suspect. Dude, I have cameras in my house. I literally have the time I walked in my house. The girls were still alive at that point. And I have the can of soda that I had in my video. Having my hands walking, walking into my house. So, yeah, it wasn't me, I promise. Some people said, oh, John might have been a suspect. Dude, I have cameras in my house. I literally have the time I walked in my house. The girls were still alive at that point. And I have the can of soda that I had in my video. Having my hands walking. How would he know that the girls were still alive when he walked inside his house? How would he know that? Unless he's a psychic, they can see things when they're happening. At that time, how would he know that the girls were still alive? Wasn't the previous timeline, didn't they say that the girls died between three to four? When did you reach home, Mr. Mr. Vito, I was watching you. You were in the grub truck like for a while, for a long, long, long while. I was watching you, watching your mobile. I was watching you, watching the group yelling while your friend, the manager, was playing Careless Whispers by George Michael. You were there for a while. Please like, share, and subscribe. May the correct justice be served for these four victims. They deserve that. And I hope to see you in the trial, Jovito. I hope Aunt Taylor has a field day on you. <laughs>